I wouldn't have met Natalie. I wouldn't have started Boss Babe. I wouldn't be here right now. And so it's like that rewire. I'm like, wow, what happens when I actually invest in my brain? No one can take that knowledge away from me. I can just build on that. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. One of the coolest parts about this podcast is it allows me to peel back the curtain on some of my own behind the scenes learning and let you eavesdrop in on the conversations I'm having with different business mentors and coaches and leaders and peers that help me show up and serve you the very best that I can. Doing business alongside so many great entrepreneurs who share so much of the same visions and goals that I have for my own life and business is truly a gift. And I'm so excited to step up to the mic with two women who I'm learning and growing with right now. Danielle Canty and Natalie Ellis are the co-founders of Boss Babe Inc. It's an online community for women starting and scaling online businesses. We had the opportunity to come together for a mastermind recently, and I'm so excited to download with these powerhouse women and reflect on what we've learned and what we're implementing after that experience. We're talking about how proximity is power and the different stages of our businesses that have led us to our greatest growth. We're sharing what a mastermind is and how it's benefited us, how to discern what type of investment is right for you and what you're needing and so much more. And the best part, if you love this interview, there's a special invite for you at the end. But if you're eager and you're wanting to learn how you can join us and our favorite mentors for a free five-day challenge, head to jennaschallenge.com and sign up for the Own Your Future five-day free virtual challenge where we'll all be sharing and learning right alongside of you. Again, that's jennaschallenge.com to save your seat. Now, without further ado, here are my friends, the boss babes themselves, Danielle and Natalie. Start and grow your email list in 2021 with Flowdesk. Start a free 30-day trial, no credit card necessary, plus lock in at 50% off your monthly subscription when you fall in love at jennacutcher.com slash Flowdesk. That's jennacutcher.com slash F-L-O-D-E-S-K. Thanks to Athena Club for supporting the Gold Digger podcast. Stop using razors that underdeliver and switch to Athena Club. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use the promo code Gold Digger. I am so excited. Actually, I should say we are so excited because today is a collaboration between Jenna Kutcher and Boss Babe, the amazing Natalie and Danielle. So are you guys ready to have a conversation? And and Natalie, maybe give a little context about why we're sitting down to the mic in this manner to share some fun stuff with our audiences. We are so excited. So this all came about, we were in Miami together a couple of weeks ago and we were spending the weekend masterminding and we were sitting at dinner, having some wine and realized that we wanted to bring more women into the conversations that we were having. We were learning so much and had so many takeaways that it felt like it would be a miss if we weren't able to share that. So we just decided let's throw on our headphones and actually talk about what our biggest takeaways from the mastermind were. I love it. And I think too, it was really smart of us to kind of pause and take a little space away from the event itself, because I don't know about you girls, but when I get home from something like that, I feel like it takes days, even weeks for that information to kind of sift through my brain and for me to really recognize like what was the biggest thing I walked away with because when we put ourselves in those situations especially after a year of massive isolation when we're immersed in it it's like 
overwhelming, but in the best way possible. Danielle, what was your experience like in Miami? And can you share for everyone listening? I bet they're thinking, what is a mastermind? So can you share kind of what you think it is? Yeah, I love this as well. And just sharing that it takes time to digest these things. Cause I think people hold themselves like to a high standard sometimes where they think they should just watch something or listen to something. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, I know exactly how to put this into play, but it's not like that. And so for me, when we were in Miami, it was about like collecting notes, collecting different ideas, hearing different opinions and not necessarily processing them, but just documenting them. And, you know, we'll share in a few, in a few minutes time, but just being able to like read them and like relearn them. And actually when I write something, sometimes I read it another time. I'm like, oh, actually it's landing differently now. Like actually that sits differently with me, but I just love the beauty of masterminds. I think it was Napoleon Hill who said like uh, a mastermind is defined of when like two minds come together and they create a third that couldn't be, I'm probably butchering this quote by the way, but couldn't be achieved <laughs> without the other mind. And there's just something so powerful in that. And, you know, Natty and I personally really experienced that in a work climate, you know, being able to bounce ideas off with each other. And I think just bringing lots of different opinions, people from different experiences, different industries, different walks of life. There is something so magical about that to not only just move your business forward, but to move your life forward in general. And that's what I love. And I always get things out of masterminds that I never even thought of. Things hit me that I didn't even know I needed to hear. That's what I love about them. Yes. I love too, because with masterminds, there's so many different formats, right? There's paid, there's unpaid, there's multiple days, there's, you know, sitting down at a table. And I feel like sometimes the most rich conversations happen over dinner or over cocktail hour and not even in like the formal hot seat rooms, because I feel like, like for me personally, I'm more introverted. And so sometimes those one-on-one conversations where you're like, man, it is so good to just sit with another person and like deconstruct this thought. And I feel like we all had so much of that together. And that was just like, so beneficial. And also to just having that ability to be in community together. It's like I can text you for like anything now. And it just feels like so much more comfortable because we've built that time together in the flesh, which I think the entire world is missing right now after the past year. So who wants to share like their biggest takeaway and maybe share a little bit of how we structured some of the events so that we got these takeaways? Yeah, I'm happy to kick off. So we structured the event in a couple of different ways. There was one way where we all sat in the room and we got to ask a question and we got some answers based on that question. And the other part was we all got up and taught something. So we gave something and then we asked a question and we had everyone in the room collaborate on the response. So it really wasn't about just one person giving all the answers. It's about, wait, this is a moment where we have some of the best minds in marketing and business in one room together. What's my burning question that I really want to ask this person? But what's interesting for me is very much what you just said. My biggest takeaway wasn't marketing or necessarily business related, it was, and Tony Robbins said this, it was proximity is power. And it's one of those things that you know, but you sometimes need to continue hearing for it to really land. And it was those conversations, like you were saying, at the dinners or at lunches where we were out of session and we were connecting one-on-one with each other, where you just ask someone one question and the response they gave to you is worth just being there the entire weekend because it is such a good answer. It was the one thing that you were really stuck on and really looking for. That part was powerful. And the reason that proximity is power was the biggest takeaway for me is when you are around people that are doing things, big things, things that you want to be doing, things that you are doing, you feel really comfortable with them. You're in a relationship like you were talking about, Jenna, where you can just text them and ask them things. That is really powerful. And for me, the way that's shown up in my life is I feel really supported in my business where if something's going wrong, like my ads aren't working or I want to create a new funnel and I don't know how I know who to text or I have friends that are absolutely killing it and it opens my mind up to what else is possible because I see them winning and I'm like, wait, 
they can do it. I can totally do this. This is very possible for me, which is why finding communities that have people in it that, you know, you're looking to be like, or you are like is really, really important. And then there's also things like, you know, a lot of questions there were around like, okay, so I have a little bit of money that I want to start investing. Like I just want to dip my toe in and see what that would look like. How do I find out about investment opportunities? And a lot of that was like, oh, well, I found out from a friend, they emailed me this investment opportunity, or it all came from community, some of the biggest investments they had. And it was just one of those things, one of those big reminders that, yeah, I get to be really intentional about who I spend my time with and who I invest in my relationships with. I love that so much. And it was crazy because even today we were on the phone with our investor advisor and it was so cool talking to him because I was like, yeah, we were just in Miami and I have a connection for this or I have a friend that's really smart with this. And he was like, my gosh, like these connections are invaluable. And so much of it is like over my head or outside of my comfort zone. And so it just is so exciting because it's like, wait, like we have this opportunity to have people on speed dial that are experts in the areas where we're not. And I think that's my biggest takeaway is the room that we were in. So it was really like 10 people And then some of them had business partners and such. So it was under 20 people, but it was a really unique group that Dean and Tony had gathered. And so it was people that I maybe necessarily wouldn't have spent time with had they not been gathered by Dean and Tony and invited in that way. And I thought it was so cool because it's such a reminder to like get out of our comfort zone and like also to like branch out beyond what we know. And it's funny because I find myself drawn to what's comfortable like I would sit with you guys at every meal because I love you and I know you. But it was really interesting in those offshoot conversations and those connections with people that I didn't really know ahead of time or I didn't really understand exactly what they did. Getting to learn from people that are doing things that are on a parallel path but very different was so inspiring and Like Natalie said, there was one point where everyone kind of got up and taught something that they were good at and the array of topics covered from like life insurance all the way to ad strategy, giveaways, like there's so many different things talked about. And it's so cool too, because I think as women, we have this unique advantage of our intuition and being fairly more in touch with it. And so it was easy for us or easier for us to discern like, oh my gosh, this takeaway is the one I needed or like, ah, this idea is really cool, but like, it's not for me. And so I think that intuition and discernment around ideas that maybe are coming from different industries or, or different people allows us to actually go home and take action in a way that doesn't feel overwhelming. Because for me, masterminds have always been like, if I walk away with one idea that I can implement and get results, it was worth every penny. It was worth every minute. Yeah. And I, I love that. And I just want to echo on one thing that you said is we can sometimes be drawn to our comfort zones. Like we wanted to sit together on every dinner and for any other introverts listening, I feel like this thing might give you some comfort because it definitely did for me. Whenever I go to masterminds or events and there's so many different people that I don't know, I generally will think about, okay, if I was just to drop in deep with two people, who would that be? Who would I choose to spend my time with and build that relationship with? And it doesn't mean that I don't say hello to and get to know everyone else, but I'm building those deeper relationships with just a handful of people. And when I, you know, was first getting started going to events, I would get so overwhelmed by, oh my goodness, I don't have the energy in me to show up for every conversation and every new relationship. But just having that intention going into it changed anything. So if anyone's sitting at home and they're like, I don't have the energy for 20 people, that's how I approach it. And it's been a game changer for me. I agree with that as well. I think it comes back to like, like you say, like being intentional about everything that we do. And one thing I really learned, like obviously this mastermind in person was such an amazing experience, but hearing you guys talk, it's also reminding me about my first mastermind that I was a part of, which was actually virtual. So I never actually met any of those people, but the same thing happened. There was like a Facebook group and rather being overwhelmed by the number of people that were in there, I was like, okay, I'm going to be like, I was just watching some conversations. I was like, oh, I have a few things in common with those people. And then the really like 
dive deep into those relationships and actually rebuild. So I think like, and also COVID's really reinforced this as well, that you don't even have to be in person to actually create masterminds. You can be super intentional about meeting people in different communities that are like-minded to you and really leaning in that. I just think sometimes it can be a little bit scary, but it's so surprising how many people, like I'm sure you are listening to this, like, oh yeah, I'm sure Jenna and Natalie and Danielle never think about that, but we do. Like it's nerve wracking for us to meet new people as well and just being like, okay, I'm going to put myself up outside my comfort zone and just like lean into this a little bit more and see what's happening. Over the years, I feel like I've gotten way more introverted and just too protective of my energy. And while we were in Miami, I was pregnant. And so I was like telling the girls, like, I need to go sleep. Like, I like I need to like decompress and like go up to my room and just like protect that energy. And I think too, one of the powerful conversations that we had that we should dive into after Danielle shares her biggest takeaway is talking about like women in business and just a little bit of the differences because I think that our dinnertime conversations were really beautiful, just extensions of how men in business and women in business think differently and how we kind of have to process our careers and our life changes and all of those. And we're all kind of going through life changes right now. And so we're always kind of having to think you know, with those changes in mind and and our goals and our futures in mind, but also like, what does this mean for our careers? So Danielle, what was your biggest takeaway from the mastermind? Yeah, I think mine was actually like reflecting on what I went through in 2020, which we did a podcast episode on it recently in the Boss podcast about how I lost a million dollars. I think one of the big takeaways for me was around like the diversification of wealth. And I actually shared that in that podcast I did because I didn't grow up wealthy. And so my understanding of how to manage money was very limited and it's actually really hard to learn and it can be really scary and throw up a lot for a lot of people like you don't even know what questions to ask or who to ask the people and so I think for me like I learned that I needed to diversify way more earlier than I did and now I'm really understanding like what actually diversification means because for me there's wealth and there's like the monetary value and there's also the time aspect to wealth as well like I feel like the perfect combination is to be rich in both And so like, it's not only just around like, okay, I'm trading time for money. That's like one form of wealth. Okay. How can I make my money work for me? That's another way. So it might be investments, et cetera. But then also like, how can I create passive income? How can I create something that doesn't take any more time, but makes more money and I can grow it? How can I duplicate myself? How can I get myself to appear, seem to appear in many different places at once, but not actually physically doing that? So there was a whole learning that I'm even like still continuing to go to around, okay, how do I learn to manage my money and learn to manage my time? And that diversification is very much key to that. You know, like learning that actually there's different ways to invest your income into different funds or angel or whatever that is. And also in business, there's different ways to apply your time. So let's say creating courses or creating something that is very passive versus actually going, okay, what I used to do was service. So I used to be this is me, 15 minutes slot, you're paying for my time. And so just really understanding about how I can do that further was really powerful. I feel like there's a colossal shift that everyone goes through in business when at the beginning, like you value money over time, right? Like most entrepreneurs, when you are starting out, you will stay up all night long to save yourself the money it would have cost to outsource. Like we are control freaks. We are excited. We totally value money over time. But I feel like for so many of us, especially people who do find their footing and find success, success, there becomes this time where you're like, my time is my currency. Like, how can I buy back my time? And I found that like the best thing that money can buy is buying you back your time and that freedom. And so it's always really inspiring to me when you're around other people who have felt that shift, because it doesn't necessarily mean they're money hungry. In fact, most of them are just time hungry. And so finding people that want to manage their time so fiercely, and to who understand the value of their time, I think that is so inspiring for us, especially as women who tend to be like, give, 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 we're always serving, focusing on our community, all of these things. What do you think, Natalie? Yes, to all of that. And I 
I read a quote earlier this week that said, true wealth is having the choice to spend your time however you want to spend it. And what that means is you're not having to think about how much is this thing going to cost me? You know, if you want to fly to this country, you can afford to fly. You have enough wealth to decide how you spend your time. Or I love doing this thing more than this thing because I'm going to do this thing that I love. I have that choice. I have that freedom. And it It's so important to remember that because I think sometimes, like you say, when you're in the initial stages of your business, it's about how can I make money? How can I bring money into the business? And at some point, there's going to be a shift where you might want to start outsourcing certain things. You're going to need to change how you are spending your time. And for a lot of entrepreneurs, there's a lot of guilt associated with that. Oh, I should be doing it myself or I shouldn't be hiring this person to support me. I should be doing it. I see other people doing it or, you know, I could be doing this extra thing or I could just cut my lunch break a little bit shorter. All of this comes up and learning to work through the guilt and realize your end goal can happen now. If this end goal is the choice of how you spend your time, you can have that now. And I think you're such a good example of doing that too, Jenna. You're so clear about how you want to spend your time and having those boundaries in place. I really admire how you got so clear on that. And you're not you're not the kind of person that's chasing, chasing, chasing. And we're not either. And that's really nice to know what you want and what you don't want. Yeah, I think it's really interesting because when I think back to past masterminds, I think that there's a a point in your life too where you're looking for those like mentors and those people to like hand over the exact process and like teach me step by step. Like you're the kind of note taker that's literally like, give me everything. I'm so hungry. I just want to know how you did this thing. And I feel like as you start to grow, and I, I think for a lot of us, as we start to recognize the gift of our intuition and how our gut speaks to us, we can show up to the room and make maybe jot down one page of notes that'll be so much more transformative than trying to duplicate someone else. And I think there's this balance because, you know, there are amazing, amazing tools that will give us the blueprint that will help us find those solutions, right? Like I'm like an avid course taker, like teach me the fast way to do this. And then I'll figure out how I want to do it on my own. But I also think that there's also this really big gift of like being able to listen to someone's process and adopt the pieces that fit and like let the rest go without feeling guilt or shame. And so it's really important too, as you're growing and learning and and investing in yourself, whether that's through a course or a mastermind or a coach or a mentor to really be honest about what level of discernment you're at with like where your abilities are and and where you want to go. And also to assess like, who has done it before me? Who has done it better? Who has mastered this? Like, how can I take what they've done decades of work on and really like Dean and Tony, I would say, turn it into days. And it's been amazing for me to kind of learn how to navigate those waters of like, okay, I need a course to just learn this something that I know nothing about, or I just need to take like a piece of someone's process and then make it my own. What has your guys' learning journey been like? Because I feel like people don't talk about it enough. And it's really interesting when you're in a position and poised as a mentor or a leader, people just kind of assume you just like landed there. But I'm super curious. So one for me, and we were just talking about this, was I really wanted to get on YouTube. And Danielle was, you know, in my ear asking me why I was not getting on YouTube. She was like cheering me on in the background. And I almost had a breakdown. And I said to her, Danielle, I am so overwhelmed about the tech. I don't know how to film, record, light myself. I don't know how to do any of these things. So that's, you know, the thing that's starting my way. I can show up and I can deliver content, but the tech is so overwhelming for me. And so we decided, well, why not just invest in a course? So we invested in a course and there was a lot of stuff in that course that I didn't necessarily need, but it showed me how to set up my tech and it showed me how to get going. And that for me was worth the investment because I got what I needed and then I was good to go. What's yours, Danielle? 
Yeah, I love that. And I think when we first started the business, we always used to have this saying, like, don't ask us, Google it. Like, if you can Google it, you can find it out. And I think that's great sometimes. But now there's so much content out there. It's like you could be Googling it and you don't even know who you're listening to. Like, are these people actually the right people to be giving advice? And I think just kind of building on what Natalie said now, it's like, okay, we will enlist experts who've been where we want to go that then we learn from. So like I say, when we chose, you know, who are we going to learn to do? I say we. Natalie, who are you going to learn to do YouTube from? <laughs> you know, we we bought a course where someone was like way ahead in YouTube where we wanted to go. And so I think that also is that, you know, Start putting things through filters has been really, really important for us as entrepreneurs. I think entrepreneurs need to, they're in, like, often enthusiastic. They're like, yes, they want to create something. But the skill set that sets entrepreneurs apart is really being able to say no to the other things that are like dispersing the energy too thin. And I think that's what we really did. We're like, we're not listening to all these pieces, people trying to teach us about YouTube. We're listening to this one person, this one method, because they've been where we're going and we're going to follow that. Versus like, I'm going to watch all these articles on Google and random free ones on YouTube get so freaking confused that then you don't go forwards at all because now you're just like, hang on a minute, there's so many different ways to get here. Like I could get from LA to New York, so many different directions. I want a roadmap. And I think that's been like a very, very powerful thing in our growth of being like one, one roadmap, we're following it, let's go. Why are razors so expensive? Like seriously, who decided that shaving my armpits needs to cost me so much? We deserve better than having to choose between either cheap disposable razors or overpriced brands. And Athena is giving us what we deserve from our razors. I've teamed up with Athena Club and they are offering you 20% off your first order when you sign up. Just go to athenaclub.com and use the promo code Gold Digger. The Athena Club razor is expertly designed with the sharpest patented blades on the market, and they're enhanced with a revolutionary water-activated serum that has shea butter and hyaluronic acid for a skin-soothing shave with maximum hydration. And the razor kit is only $9, which includes two five-blade razor heads, your choice of a razor handle color, and a magnetic holder for easy storage. My new blades auto ship to me, so I never run out. Now, I ordered the white one because I wanted it to coordinate with my bathroom tile, which totally sounds silly, but an organized, coordinated bathroom really sparks joy. Beyond that, it really is the smoothest shave I've ever had. Stop using razors that underdeliver and switch to Athena Club. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use the promo code Gold Digger. That's A T H E N A C L U B.com, promo code Gold Digger for 20% off. Flowdesk was created by two female founders to solve the email challenges that the other platforms just couldn't solve. Flowdesk is a favorite among my students with over 4,500 gold diggers on the platform today. To start, grow, or refresh your email list strategy with gorgeous, customizable templates, sleek and easy to install forms, simple to set up audience segments, and automated workflows, try Flowdesk. Use my link to lock in at half off your subscription. That's $19 a month for life at jennacutcher.com slash Flowdesk. Flowdesk is an easy to use, intuitive, and beautiful solution to email marketing. You don't need to learn how to be a copywriter, graphic designer, and website developer to start and grow your email list. Flowdesk includes beautifully designed templates, many with pre-written copy you can use and adapt for your own brand's voice. You can create forms and pop-ups for opt-ins even if you don't have a website yet, plus behind-the-scenes insights to track your progress and email success. You'll have unlimited everything. There's no subscription tier. It's all yours from day one. So you can learn, grow, implement, and market to your list for $19 a month. No limits, no lock templates, all of the features you need to grow and serve your email list. Your monthly subscription is $19 a month. If you sign up at jennacutcher.com slash flowdesk, that's jennacutcher.com slash F-L-O-D-E-S-K. Yeah, I love that too, because 
what I notice, and I bet you notice the same with your students, is that saying that they always say is so true when they say those who pay, pay attention. Because I know if somebody says like, oh, I'll just give you it for free. I'm like, no, 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 let me pay because I need skin in the game to hold myself accountable. But I think too, there comes a certain level of confidence that inspires people to actually take action. And the confidence to invest in yourself really makes you move your booty. Like I remember making investments at the early days and like not necessarily telling Drew exactly how much they cost, like literally marking the calendar, like money back guarantee 30 days, let's go. But I remember being so keen on proving myself right, like proving myself as a worthy investor and also someone who's like willing to like pay the dividends in order to reap that benefit. And so I think it's really cool with students because I notice that the people who do invest, who go go beyond the free, because it, free is amazing. Like free can take you really far with books and podcasts. Like it is such a gift. But I think then when you start to see that shift of like, I can save my time by spending some money and I can collect knowledge that I can literally use over and over and over again and continue to earn rewards on that investment. I feel like that's a huge shift for entrepreneurs and it's a really scary leap to take. Yeah. And we were just like talking about how maybe sometimes women and men differ in business. And I actually, am going to call this one out because I think women investing in themselves, actually I've experienced and from our community that I speak to a lot is this guilt thing. Like, oh my goodness, I feel guilty investing myself. And actually like that reframe around, or like, it's more like they feel guilty spending this money versus then seeing it as an investment in themselves. Wow. Like, and I, I always think like where I've come from and if I hadn't have invested in myself, if I hadn't like paid for knowledge and invested in my brain essentially, I don't think I would be where I'm at, you know? There's very few things that you can truly invest in and see the exponential growth. So I think the first online course I bought teaching me how to start on Instagram and how to start an online business, I wouldn't have met Natalie. I wouldn't have started Boss Babe. I wouldn't be here right now. And so it's like that rewire. I'm like, wow, what happens when I actually invest in my brain? No one can take that knowledge away from me. I can just build on that. That is such gold. And it just brings me back to when you talk about one of your biggest takeaways from the mastermind in, okay, I'm starting to build some savings now. I've got some money in the bank. Where do I invest it so that it goes to work for me? And there's lots of different places you can invest your money that's going to go to work for you. But like you said, investing in yourself and investing in knowledge generally is the biggest ROI if and only if you're willing to put the time in to actually learn and implement, not just buy the course and forget about it and then come asking for a refund because you didn't do it. But actually when you make that commitment, going all in and saying, yep, I'm going to put in the time, I'm going to do it. Which leads me, Jenna, I'm so dying to know what is your takeaway? What was your biggest takeaway? I think what's so interesting to me is being around other people that are just dreaming bigger. And I know that sounds so simple, but like we live in Minnesota. Most of the time we spend time in a town of 1200 people. We have incredible neighbors, but you know, with the last year being the way it was, I don't get to spend a lot of time with other entrepreneurs who are talking about the same topics or or at a similar life stage or asking those bigger questions. And it's so awesome for me because when Drew gets to come along to these things, I feel like it makes me look less crazy because he's like, wait, there are other people out there (laughs) like you. Like you're not the only one that thinks about conversion rates or is thinking, you know, like it's so cool and affirming because for for him, I'm like this weird alien uh, that somehow inhabited his life. And so it's really awesome to have that time. And I also just think too, this is the weirdest takeaway, but I think it's so special when our spouses can connect because I think that it takes really special people to put up with entrepreneurs and the people that are always like, just one more email, just one more episode. I got to, ah, I got to run, do this. And, and so it's really, really cool. I love listening to the conversations that happen between the partners or the supportive people, because I feel like they often are kind of in the background or they don't necessarily get 
get the credit that they deserve. And so it's not just about like the community of entrepreneurs coming together, but it's really like getting a peek into people's lives and, and getting to see that supportive role and, and getting to talk about like things other than business. And I think that that to me is just like so incredibly special. And that's why too, people don't understand like when we say like, oh, my dear friend or things, it's not just saying that. It's like, we're actually like doing life and business and and going through like real life stuff together. And it, it's impossible to not build like actual relationships outside of working relationships when you're really open to it and when you're in those situations. And I just think those like little nuanced things that happen behind the scenes are just like so special to me. I could not agree more. And it was actually the first event like that, that I brought Steven to, which was so great because normally I come home from these events and I have, you know, ideas out the wazoo and I'm like trying to download him on all these ideas. And he's like, (laughs) what, what, what were you just doing? Where was you, where were you at? And he never would understand. Whereas he came this time and he, he loved getting to connect with everyone else and was like, Oh, I actually get it now. And yeah, that's the, it's so nice that there are other people out there like us and the, that our spouses don't think we're crazy. And it's really funny. Danielle and I went for dinner yesterday with a couple of guy friends and we picked up the check And when the waiter brought the check back, he gave the check and the card to one of the guys and (laughs) they looked at each other and they were like, doesn't it just annoy you so much when this happens? And the two of them had that full on bonding moment. And again, that was really nice to be able to, uh, that they had that person to talk to who actually got this, you know, crazy journey that we're all on. And this is kind of like why we started Boss Babe at the beginning right now, Natalie, was because like we were female entrepreneurs. I had my chiropractic business. Natalie had her super food business. And we were like really freaking lonely. Like no one gets us. Like who are we having these conversations with? Like who really understand it? And, you know, I have amazing friends from school, but I was just like having completely different problems to them. And, you know, going right back to the beginning of this whole conversation, like there's so much power in proximity, not for just people you can learn from but who you can confide in and who you can just pick up the phone you don't have to explain the whole background to you know what's gone wrong in the tech situation like I'm blaming Mercury retrograde or something like I need to explain all that because they know or they just have enough awareness to be like oh yeah like I get it I think there's that's like what I love about masterminds about communities about bringing people together is that it's so and thank goodness thank goodness for social media these days like if I was living back in my old little village back home I never would have met the people that I've met and so I'm just like so grateful I'm like wow the internet as many problems as it has on social media like social media has allowed me to connect with so many people and I think that for me is like one of the best things that we do at Boss Babe and that I've experienced personally from growing business and being an entrepreneur is like the connections. Yeah. I think it's important to to talk about a little bit about how entrepreneurship has really, frankly, afforded us the flexibility to navigate life changes and to kind of go through things with a different lens that allows us to really work from wherever. And I laugh when you guys tell the bill story because whenever Drew and I are somewhere, if we're traveling or if we're out, people will always say and turn to Drew, oh, what do you do that allows you to travel like that or to work like that? And Drew goes, I'm a stay-at-home dad. And then they look at me like, okay, well, what the heck do you do? And (laughs) we always laugh about it. it. It actually grinds Drew's gears pretty bad at this point. But I think that it's amazing to be able to navigate a lot of big life changes because let's be honest, our listeners, especially after this last year, are facing a lot of decisions. And I think too, as women, all of that is loaded with our biological clocks, with relationships, with location, with proximity, with our ambitions, our dreams. And there's like so many layers to being not just a woman, but being a woman in business. And I think that there aren't enough discussions around what it looks like to navigate, you know, motherhood and and all these different things as a businesswoman. So do you guys want to share a little bit about just kind of how entrepreneurship has changed that for you or anything going on with you guys? 
Yeah, it just really can't be underestimated what financial freedom can do for your life. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a multimillionaire, but it means that you have the freedom to decide what your life looks like because you're not basing it on, you know, what you're getting paid in two weeks time. You're not basing it on that short-term mindset. So for me, like life changes this year, we decided to move to Austin. It felt like the right thing to do. And we can both work from anywhere. And the money wasn't an issue to pay for the move and to hop and to try this new place, which was incredible. And entrepreneurship is the thing that fueled that. And same thing with thinking about, okay, when is a good time for us to try for a family, knowing that we really get to decide that and we get to have help and support because we've been prioritizing saving and, and building wealth over the past few years. And for me, honestly, it all starts when I put an online course out there that's when I really started to to see real wealth building because I wasn't trading my time for money which is something you talk a lot about Danielle but that really gave me the insight into what else was possible and it's all grown from there and it feels really good to be in the driving seat of my life yeah I think that's one of the things that I struggled with the most was I I didn't feel like I was in the driving seat of my life for a long time when I was a chiropractor like a, a lot of people heard my story like I was literally had to be in a location and lived my life in 15 minute appointments. And although I had like the quote unquote financial freedom, like I could, I could afford the things I wanted. I didn't live lavish lifestyle or anything like that, but you know, I could afford to do what I wanted to do. But when my dad had that accident, it really pivoted for me because it started going through my head. Like he had a skiing accident, fractured his pelvis. I'm like, wow. Like what if, what if like my mom and dad, like get sick one day and I can't be there to be with them. Like it was kind of a bit morbid, but then I was like, I also like, what if I have a family and then I can't take time off and I can't make a decision? Well, I actually never shared this. Like, what if I have a family and I can't afford to take time off with my child because I was stuck in that trading time for money situation? And so for me, those are sort of things like, hang on a minute, how can I, and I love how all of this is tying in together, by the way, like that whole diversification of wealth started then. Like, how, okay, how can I duplicate my time? And, you know, now I'm in a situation where I've been able to move countries. Now I'm in a situation where I'm like, okay, I live in LA. Maybe I'll move to Austin. Like, who knows? I'm going to go once the borders open up and I'm able to go home for a month. Like, all these things. And I, I don't ever want to take that for granted. Like, that is something that's so, so precious to me. And also, I was very, very intentional about creating. And I want to call that out. I made a decision that I wanted my life to change and I took action on it. I decided I was not going to whinge about it. I was not going to moan about it. I was like, I am taking action. And I also want to say, I decided to take action from 2016. It did not happen overnight. I actually, it was in a process, step by step. I knew where I was going. I knew where my North Star was, but it did take time to get there but I'd started making steps forwards. And I think that's that's a big key thing as well. But then I felt like I was in the driving seat because I was starting to drive my own vehicle versus feeling like I was having it driven by myself. I think what's so amazing about this conversation is we keep coming back to like, there are these like colossal shifts that every entrepreneur will feel at different points, at that starting line, at that first investment, at the time where they start to listen to their intuition and all those things. And I know for me, I was in the service space trading time for money as a wedding photographer. And it was actually our fertility journey that really made me want to own my future because we had two losses before we had our daughter. And I had to plan trying to get pregnant around wedding schedule, like around my wedding season, because I was like, okay, I have six months a year to make money and I need to plan my pregnancy so that I can be not too pregnant, but pregnant and not give birth during a wedding. And I realized like I'm planning my life around different people's lives that I go in and out of in a day. And when we had our second loss, I had found out that we lost the baby and I had to go shoot a wedding the next day. And I had to show up knowing like anything can happen at any moment. And like, I'm going through the worst day of my life on somebody else's best day of their life. And I have no control over this because if I don't show up, I don't get paid. And it's so interesting because I think for a lot of us recognizing like, if I stop 
the business stops. And that's a paralyzing feeling that I think a lot of people have felt this last year is like, there's nothing worse when you've built something that is great that you're passionate about, but that you realize doesn't give you life. Like it doesn't afford you time. And I think so many people start a business looking for freedom. And then they realize like the business took over their lives. And so on this theme of like owning your future, we're really excited because all three of us get to be a part of something that I think is just so timely. And that really sums up a lot of what we've talked about today, but also gives people the opportunity to learn from a lot of the people we sat at a table with. Natalie, do you want to share a little bit about this? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And there's probably a lot of you listening in who are thinking, you know what, I'm ready. But the whole idea of doing this is overwhelming. I don't know where to start. I don't know which course to take. I just don't know. And so the thing I love the most about this challenge is I'm almost seeing it as a fresh start, a chance to go in with fresh eyes and be guided over five days through thinking through where I want to go. What's next for me? What does my next, you know, up level look like and being guided by people who've been there, done it and do it for a living. That's not to be underestimated. I think it's going to be the biggest challenge in internet history. So firstly, you don't want that FOMO, but secondly, really putting this on your calendar as the time that is a fresh start for you. And, and like you were saying, Danielle, you are knowing you're about to make a decision and you're going to take action on it and let us support you. You know, the three of us doing it as well as so many other incredible speakers that I've never seen together in any event before. I don't think this will ever happen again. It's going to be incredible. I'm so excited. I'm going to be taking it. I'm going to be thinking about what my next up level looks like. And I just, I really can't wait. Yeah. And I'm just building on what you were saying, Natalie, about deciding to decide. I think sometimes like you feel like you have to know like so far ahead. But for me, I think it's just like, first of all, making a decision that you want something to change, (laughs) then finding someone (laughs) to help you change and then just doing the first thing they say to do. That's it. That's all you need to know. There's firstly things you don't need to know anything further. It's just being like, okay, 2021, I am making a change in my life and this is where I'm going. And that we spoke about earlier, intention, intention, intention. Like your, Jenna, you were talking about being intentional with your time. I was sharing about being intentional with my decision. We spoke about intentional about who you surround yourself with. It's about being intentional about the life that you want to create in all different realms and knowing that that's within your power. And I think often we give away power. This some of us can, you know, embody that in victim mode. Oh, it's okay for them, or it's okay for her, or it's okay for him. Like all of it. Like it's some this happened to me. Versus like, wow, like what happens when I'm like, this happened for me, not to me. I am in full control of this. I can choose to see it this way, or I can choose to see it somewhere else that's going to propel me forward. This bad situation happened, or I'm in the situation now because now I can see what I want to change. Yeah. I'm so excited to be a part of it with you girls. And I am like so excited. Like you said, Natalie, it's like this like permission for a fresh start halfway through the year. I mean, I cannot believe that it's May and like, where has this year gone? And I think a lot of times too, we're like waiting for the world to change and waiting for the world to open back up and waiting for our new normal. And this notion, this idea of like coming together as a community, getting a ton of people like in a room together, kind of a virtual room and learning from mentors that you would not be able to learn from in this capacity if the world was open. It's insane. And I'm so excited because I just think the theme is so needed. I think so many of us, like even just us three, we're going through so many life changes and shifts. And I think this last year really had us asking ourselves those hard questions. Like, what do I want? Am I in alignment? Is this the right thing? What does success look like for me? How am I spending my time? Like, what do I want my legacy to be? And so it's so exciting to be like challenged by different leaders and to get different perspectives and looking at the lineup. It's like, man, if you don't resonate with this person, you're definitely going to resonate with this one. And so it's like such an awesome, awesome opportunity and it's totally free and you don't even have to leave the comfort of your home. I know. I cannot believe it's May already. 
I don't know where this year has gone, but it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. So if anyone is really ready to take that next step, all the links that you need are in the show notes so you can join us. Make sure you share it with a friend too, because having that accountability is important. And then make sure you get it on your calendar. So the times that you know that there's going to be trainings, put it on your calendar. And if you have a conflict, you absolutely can't make it during that time put the replay on your calendar. Because if you can commit to being consistent for five days, you can commit to being consistent for a lot longer after that. And we spoke earlier about investing in yourself. And there's that VIP version if you want that bit more accountability, whether it's like, okay, I've got to have some skin in the game, or I've got to be held accountable to doing these extra, like coming to getting some extra support. Like that's there as well, which I really, really love. And like you say, it's five days, like just commit to it, to the change. Like that's easy. That's a sprint. No marathon here, just a sprint to change your life, which I think is so freaking exciting. I know. I mean, this is the easiest investment for people to prove themselves worthy of investors in terms of their time. If you're thinking, okay, I want to experience these shifts we've been talking about, and you're curious, like, when is it going to happen for me? Here's an invitation for you to say, I'm going to be an investor of my time in this free challenge and be a part of it and pull my seat up to the table. And we're just so excited. So I can't wait to see everyone in the challenge. This was so much fun. I'm so glad we did this. We need more of this. If you, if everyone yes. enjoyed it and you want more, <laughs> share this with some friends, share on Instagram, tag us and let us know that you want more of it because it's so fun. I'm just curled up with a cup of tea and we get to bring more women in behind the scenes of the conversations that we get to have. So I would love to do it. Jenna, it's always so much fun talking to you and picking your brain. I always learn so much. Well, thank you for sitting down. I'm so glad we made this date so that we could take all of those crazy thoughts in our brains and deconstruct them together. Oh my goodness. That was so much fun. And I love unscripted conversations like this one because I feel like it went in so many different directions in so many ways that hopefully served you and met you no matter where you're at. And for me, just having friendships in an industry and having real relationships has made this journey so much richer and and way less isolating. And I think that now more than ever, we're craving community. We're craving this collective energy and we're ready to kind of step into whatever our future might hold. And I don't know about you, but this last year reminded us that we never are certain what's coming next, but being able to kind of take control and and take that power and take that ownership about how we're going to navigate moving forward has been so enriching for my life. So I really hope you join us in the free five-day challenge. You can join at jennaschallenge.com. That's J-E-N-N-A-S challenge.com. And I know me and Natalie and Danielle and all of the other speakers are just so excited to pour into you, to spend five days alongside of you, to help you re- reset and help you really define how you are going to navigate moving forward. Again, that's jennaschallenge.com. Join us for the free five-day challenge. I can't wait to be a part of it. And I'm going to be a student learning right alongside of you. This opportunity is just insane. And so I'm so excited to be a part of it. Until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. And I really sincerely hope that you loved today's show. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 